Now, going into a few uh, customer use cases, which will kind of really bring out what this means in terms of, as I said, customer experience and outcome for our customers. We have a few examples. So one example is a, is a very simple example. Uh, if you buy an Exxon EV, and you know, of course, you, you know the car before you buy it, so you understand, the, understand what the car is. What we also want to claim is the car also knows you, just as you know the car. The Nexon EV today uh, will, will wish you on your birthday. When, on the day of your birthday, when you switch on the car and you, you know, get, get in the morning, it, will, it, it wishes the customer back on their birthday. Of course, you can imagine as practitioners of information technology, what kind of an integration is required to achieve this type of a simple but very personalized experience for our customers. And this integration is in the back of this whole process that we just talked about. So a customer experiencing a small positive experience on their birthday is really a personalization of their experience with our product. And this is basically coming from the N is equal to one or every customer is a unique customer kind of thinking. And we've gotten wonderful feedback from uh, all of our customers, many of our customers about uh, this type of a feature. Of course, this is done uh, only with your consent, but uh, this is just one way to show how a uh, digital product can really bring a customized or a personalized experience to a customer. We'll go to another example, which is more business-based and uh, equally important, but of a different type of uh, nature. Uh, we have a commercial vehicle uh, business that's very large, and obviously our vehicles are used to move goods across the length and breadth of our country. And all these vehicles that are out there uh, are really moving uh, essential services to our uh, customers. These sometimes break down because of various because of various reasons. One of the big challenges when we have a vehicle which is broken down, it's typically called vehicle off-road or VOR. One of the challenges of getting the vehicle off-road to on-road used to be, based on all analysis, was that the longest time it took was to get the right spare at that particular location. Now, a vehicle can break down at any part of the world or any part of our country. The point was that how do you get the spare at the right time? And that was the longest lead time it was taking. So we brought the power of digital, the power of an evolutionary approach using our digital platforms, combining the fact that we have core data in our core enterprise systems about the spare stocks, the availability of the stock and inventories across the entire ecosystem or chain, including our own warehouses, the retailers and the distributors, all the way up to our dealers and the, and the mechanics. Using that data and combining that with the location data that we are able to get with digital products, we have been able to bring down the time that it's taking to find the right spare and deliver it at the right vehicle and has brought in amazing results to our end customers. We were able to, we found out that we were able to cut the vehicle time, off-road time by about 75%, really bringing delight to our customers. The vehicle is back on the road, the material is moving again, the customer is happy and of course, uh, the wheels of commerce keep uh, you know, churning ahead. This particular solution that we, we, we have been calling as DGVOR has been an innovative uh, solution recognized by the industry. We were even honored with the Golden Peacock Award for innovation on this. And as a great example of merging an, an enterprise think, thinking approach along with the digital approach to get an outcome for our customers. The next few a couple of cases that I'll be going to talk about are around our connected vehicle platform. As I said before, commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles. We've had some very uh, you know, interesting use cases of course, all these vehicles on the road, uh, as they are moved and, and they are tracked with the consent of the customer, we are able to watch, uh, we are able to get the data and about the vehicles as they move. One of our customers recently had a vehicle stolen uh, in uh, up in Rishikesh in Uttarakhand. And using the fleet edge, we were able to recover that vehicle in two days in Delhi. And this type of uh, uh, an outcome was obviously delightful to the customer. But today, as just like we have all our digital products, like our mobile phones and tablets, our vehicle is also one of those type of products. Interesting other use cases, just like uh, keeping with the with our own uh, aim of uh, giving back to the community, the way the fleet edge uh, solution can be used or has been used in the recent pandemic has been really inspiring. So we've had uh, collaborations with uh, the government agencies. One of them was with the MP government or the Madhya Pradesh government on tracking our oxygen uh, cylinders when it was really, really needed during the deadly second wave. And these uh, live API integration from our connected vehicle platform with the government really helped them to track those oxygen cylinders and make sure that it reaches the right people at the right time. Similarly, we have other examples of using Fleet Edge or using our connected vehicle platform to track life-saving vaccines. So there are a married number of applications that we can use this uh, for, obviously to uh, really drive uh, change in the way we execute some core processes and get amazing outcomes. Uh, but all of this being really leveraged with the strength and the power of uh, digital transformed uh, solutions that we are able to implement. So I also want to talk about uh, very quickly about as we are contributing to the community and our customers with our digital uh, components and our digital products, 
We also have been very keen on making sure we con uh, contribute back to the open source community from where we have leveraged many of our core components to deliver these products back. So in key areas like cloud integration with enterprise, in key areas like uh, uh, leveraging uh, authorizations in a hybrid cloud environment on products and tools like Flume and Cleekloak, we have been developing applications, we have been developing interesting use cases and contributing back to the open source community. Uh, with that, I'd like to now go to kind of condense some of the key takeaways that we've had in our journey, how we are able to take uh, the enterprise approach with this evolutionary mindset and deliver an outcome to our, uh, to our end customers. So some of the key takeaways uh, in any digital uh, environment, we also know that we always know that there's a persona based engagement approach that we have to take. We had adopted that very, very uh, judiciously, looking at our customers, our ecosystem partners, our channel partners, even looking at our employees and adopting our products in such a way that they are engaged with a, uh, with a persona. We also have uh, the focus on personalization with context, context being key in any digital product. Productivity is a key activity or a key focus area, specifically about freedom of choice. So combining these three areas really comes, comes back and gives us an effective digital product. The two points that I would like to mention around the context of enterprise, and which is because this is a technology implementation perspective on Im implementing digital in the enterprise. So enterprise integration is absolutely critical. Without enterprise integration, aspects of authorization, context, security, and transaction integrity, the product itself does not have, uh, will not have the effect it needs to have in the field. And at the end of it, the paramount piece that I would have to say is convergence. We have to keep the focus of the process approach, the customer experience and the business outcome all needs to converge and the technology needs to be able to support that convergence in, in order to be able to bring the experience to the end customer. Looking at one more uh, view of the takeaways on the ex technology execution side, a uh, few points that I would like to uh, just share with all of you. One is the legacy systems, right? It's not about switching off an old system. It's about embracing, extending the systems in such a way that we take the wealth of knowledge and data available and provide that in the context of a digital ecosystem or a digital environment for our customers. The second thing is revolutionary, right? We don't want to look at, uh, we don't expect that you'll just have a revolution in the architecture and everything will just change for, for digital, especially if you're operating in an enterprise e you know, ecosystem or an enterprise structure. We're really looking at evolutionary architecture and as the business evolves, you evolve along with it. Another core you know, aspect of digital transformation is about empowering and nurturing capability, specifically technical capability, because without that today, technology and business, business and technology line has not only blurred, it has actually disappeared and it seamlessly moves between back and forth between the two and understanding both is extremely crucial for all the people involved in trying to deliver a, a digital system. Finally, open systems, open source, both enabled with an open mind. So with these a uh, few uh, you know, pointers that are there, looking at some of the key opportunities that we have uh, in, in this space. Some of the key opportunities that we've been working on is uh, we've been working on event-centric architecture. We've been trying to drive uh, data-driven mobility services to our customers. And finally, we've been trying to reimagine the product, the process, the customer, as well as the execution of all of this. Now, if you bring all these aspects together, we firmly believe that you know, we and the industry and we as well as uh, all of our, the IT fraternity that is out there, we have a chance to revolutionize a whole host of things, a whole host of things like the transportation ecosystem, the service ecosystem, and even the financial and the business ecosystem. All of this while retaining a very seamless customer experience. Keeping that pieces in mind and these opportunities is what we are really looking at in trying to drive an evolutionary uh, using an evolutionary platform, we would like to drive revolutionary outcomes. And obviously, all of this coming back to my organization is all about connecting aspirations to our customers. So looking at the evolutionary approach of architecture, driving at revolutionary outcomes for our end customer is all about finally delivering a, uh, the aspiration, as delivering the aspirations of our customer. And we would like to believe that you know, with this type of an approach, we are you know, meeting that aspirations of our customers and exceeding them. So I'm coming to the end of this uh, talk that we have today. I hope that you had a few insights into uh, what we have been doing in the industry and how things are moving along in this particular context. Uh, we would be very happy to listen to you if you have any interesting ideas, uh, if you have any interesting problems you believe we can address together. Uh, we are very open uh, in terms of uh, listening to your ideas and we'll be very happy to engage with all of you. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your attention and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.